May the, God, may the grace of God be felt this morning. <clears throat> I uh, pray, I wish that each one would be at a complete peace. And um, maybe I could just even say it this way. If you can't describe your feeling as peace, at least let's relax and uh, enjoy this gathering. As I see uh, some of you come to church today with a uh, heavy heart because you have lost dear ones. Amen. This is a place to come and even shed tears. That's fine. Some of you uh, might, might have come to visit, but I'd like to address us this morning again <clears throat> as one family. And that's what we are. Pardon my, uh, my horse throat. I guess that's normal that way. Today, it's just going to be a little bit more like that. <clears throat> That's because of what they did to me beginning of the week. And that is not a big deal. <clears throat> I uh, have prayed and I have found out that some of you have prayed as we come together for a, a message or a church service. Um, some of you are listening in and are at home or you're on your vehicles but we're all together in this. Thank you for coming together in spirit. And uh, my prayer has been, my desire is that we would again learn from God's word. I uh, personally, I am excited about the message. <clears throat> it is something that I, uh, I have a hard time to think that we will grasp the depth of the meaning of this message. I've said this through the years and I repeat but we as a church are so very, very privileged. That is something that as the years go by, I honestly wish that we as a church family would recognize the value or the preciousness of a uh, church life that lives in peace. There is so little that needs, to ha that needs to happen in order to disturb that. As I... Um, I have spent, I guess, in the last while more time in the book of 1 Corinthians. That is, a, that is a reality that comes to my mind more and more. That this is something that was also very much on the heart of Paul. Back in the days of 1 Corinthians, you will find that there were people that did not really care much of that. Um, today, there's still people, they don't see that as very valuable. We go to churches, we go to places, and you find it's a turmoil. It is not a place to come home to. It's not a place to come to uh, be part of. It's a place of discomfort, uh, to say the least. And yet, we are so privileged. That is through God's grace. <clears throat> so, today, we want to uh, look at a uh, portion of Scripture I have given my message a topic this morning. We are not going to just be in, in one portion of Scripture, but I take the uh, text out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The topic today is freedom to make an impact for the gospel. Abdich dan zayek de disenweis, dat ek zie nu free, om dat ek for that evangelium can what you want, or I can what not do. If you will remember, two weeks ago I had a message here in, of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I just wanted to pull out a few, uh, maybe just to connect these two messages a little bit. But in the, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and in verse 1, we had the verse, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the last part of the verse says, Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. This is a principle that we as church people deal with. This is a principle that the, uh, should I just say, the society, without having faith, they deal with this. The world is pushing knowledge. The church needs to, and I trust is, pushing charity. These two things... The more we look at them, the more we will see that in many cases they look very much the same. And yet they can be very differently approached. If you will go today, now in these days, 
Now, and maybe it has been like this for many years. But there's things that I notice, that I pick up. And uh, in hospitals, you will see that there's big banners. They might address the women. And they would say, women, do you know that you have the right? And then there's something that the women need to do. That's nothing wrong with that. It is true. But it is the approach of knowledge. It's not an approach of charity. Um, the law or your accountants or the police will say, well, you have the right for this. You should know so and so. Amen. That is knowledge driven. And then when that is being crossed, somebody now takes away your right and we are in problems. Now, if we drive something with charity, it becomes a totally different story. And so churches do not, do not uh, function with knowledge. They function with charity. And I, if you remember, I said two weeks ago that churches, a church family is kept by relationships, not by rules. Governments are kept by rules and structure, not by relationships. And so today, this is somewhat a continuation of that message. If you want, to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to dig in at verse 19. That is our text verse. But in verse 19, it says, For though I be free. Now, just to give us a little bit of a backup, Paul is spending the first part of chapter 9 Basically telling the people who he is and what it is that he is doing. <coughs> and uh, he's basically just emphasizing that he really is the apostle. Might have been a, might have been a question. But now in, chapter, in verse 19 he comes to this point and says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. That I might gain the more. In this verse you will find a principle. You will find an attitude that is going to make the difference. I wish the good Lord would have his mercy over us this morning. That we would grasp this point. We live in a world where individualism, rights and self-focus is being practiced. How can you and I stay free and yet be servants. I have, I, this is my own uh, words, but we need to be thinkers outside the box. Knowledge will make you focus on self. Charity makes you focus outside of yourself. As long as we focus inside of us or selfishly, I call that inside the box. Many people fear that if they would start to focus outside of themselves, that they're going to lose it. Many of us today, pardon me if I'm too straightforward, many of us focused a lot on ourselves as we came to church today. Probably nothing wrong with that, but we do that. We think of ourselves. We think of how will it look? What will people see? What will people think? We, you know, I don't know in to what extent of detail we think of ourselves. Well, part of that is just simply taking care of ourselves. Now, if we take that too far, you might still be sitting there and thinking of yourself. By, if, if that's what we are, you're going to miss out on the message. That's just how it is. There is there's a balance to that. We need to understand what that is. <clears throat> Now, here's a few questions. And uh, as I was pondering this, you know, how can I know whether I am here? The question is, can we make an impact without or outside of our culture? That's part of the message today. Can you and I make an impact outside of our traditions? Or even outside of our normal habits. Can we minister without my culture, my tradition, my habits standing in the way? And I know this is becoming a little bit of a difficult subject. How do I know whether I can do this? Are people turned off by just knowing that you are who you are? 
That is the heart of the message. Can we be an edifying brother? Now this is the other side of this challenge. And that is, can I be an edifying brother to my brother who I worship with regularly? So in, in other words, if I would all of a sudden just turn and just get focused on a totally different culture. I would start to dress, I would start to speak, I would start to act. I would just become, or at least try to become, a different culture altogether. I would lose my impact at home to a large extent. You wouldn't know where I'm going anymore. So it is important that you and I can relate. Can we relate? Can you relate with your brother and sister? That is sitting beside you. Are you a person who is open that your brother or sister can come and speak to you what he thinks of you? I have another question. <clears throat> In your mind, now I don't know that you can necessarily answer this accurately, but we should, we should really try to. In your mind, are you an individual that when people see or hear or think something about you, that they're going to try to make a bypass around you because they do not want to, as we say, step on your toes. Because they know that you are a sensitive character. And so, ah, oh, that's him or that's her. Yeah, I know she has a problem. I know he has a problem. But no, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to, Confront this individual about it. Because I know she is sensitive. If I will go and remind her of so or so, I will make a big problem. What do you think that people think of you? Are you and I open? Are we transparent? You know, brothers and sisters, this is very much the heart of the message as well. If I am a member at home in my own circle, and if you are a visitor here today, still take this home as, a, as part of that circle. But if you and I are sensitive in our own circle, we will never be progressive in a different circle. Are you being transparent? Are you being available to be reminded and added and, uh, and um, pointed out? Church life today stands in danger including our church, that we just simply don't do that anymore because we are too sensitive. I have really prayed that the good Lord would speak to my heart this morning and that he would speak to all of us. If this is how we are, then we are not here, what this message is speaking about. Can people speak to you freely what they think without you becoming irritated, without you becoming hurt? <clears throat> Nowadays, we have come up with a lot of good terminology. And uh, <clears throat> we use things like, well, you cannot confront Ronald Cornelson because, you know, he is very sensitive. But, you know, that is just because that's the gifts that he has. And his gifting, it just doesn't work. You could confront brother so or sister so, but not Ronald Cornelson. He's, he's sensitive. It's in the line of his gifting. Um, or that's just who he is. Well, that is who he is. But that is not an excuse. Have we come to this freedom so we're, we're starting our message with point number one. I have three points today. We will use a few words, a few minutes over time. Please pardon me. But we will go to the first point. I am a free man. Paul says in verse 19, For though I be free, this freedom that I have just talked about, that is what, we, what we're talking about. Are you, and, are you and I free? 1 Corinthians 9, 1. Paul says, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? Where was his freedom? It's not just the question. 
Paul has seen Jesus and Paul knows that he is free. Now, in that freedom, there is what it means. Freedom. I like that word freedom. That's one of the challenging words. Many people in our churches today, they struggle with that word freedom. I just want to re-say re what I've said before. Freedom means freedom. That's exactly what it means. So if, you, if, if we're called to freedom, it calls freedom. And then you have another verse that Paul uses almost the same idea. And he says in, first, in Galatians 5.1, he says, Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty, that's the same meaning as freedom, wherewith Christ, wherewith Christ, yes, amen, Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Many people seek freedom. I think I can say all of us look and seek for freedom. We all want to be free. We all want to be these people that can make the impact. We all want to be influential. Some of us, I don't know who of us, but there's a good chance some of us still look for this freedom at the wrong place. I wish that I could become to a status. Maybe it's reputational a status that I could make an impact. No, it's not freedom there. The freedom is in the Lord Jesus. The, he has made something of us. I, as I looked into this freedom that Paul was talking about, Philippians 3, 7... Here it comes out very clear. And this is where I said before, when you come to Ronald Cornelson, you cannot speak to him because he is too sensitive. And then when somebody says that, then you would go back, oh yeah, back in the day, he, was, he wasn't even a converted man and he acted like that. You couldn't speak to him because he would get angry at a snap of a moment. Ronald would just get angry because he was, he was uh, poked in the wrong place. But now he is a converted man and he's still sensitive? No, not if he has come to freedom. Now that he has come to freedom, you can come and talk to him. You can come and ask him to change this or that. And he's going to be easy to deal with. I honestly believe that that's what it means. In, first, in, in Philippians 3, 7, Paul says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss. For Christ's sake. Has that completely taken place with you and me? That's the challenge. If it hasn't, you know what? There's a good chance that your brothers and sisters are still, when they see you, they make a bypass around you. They do not want to step on your toes because they're afraid you're going to react like you did in the old days. Brothers and sisters, are you today a free person to make an impact? Or can you still be irritated like a non-believer? Are you easily hurt? I personally, and I think you all know this, that I am very much a man that's in for counseling and helping people through, uh, through their uh, problems of life. But if I or you come to the point where I say, Please don't speak to me because I'll be hurt. Then we are completely off. I want to be hurt if that's what it takes. If I'm a free man, that's who I, that's, that's my attitude. <clears throat> now the other um, <clears throat> area of this freedom is what we find in Galatians 5 and that is that some of us don't understand this freedom we have become free but now we use it for our fleshly ways Galatians 5 13 for brethren ye have been called unto liberty and that was the heart of Paul that this liberty to the Galatians only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another that liberty that freedom that we have been called is with one intent and that is to be able to serve years ago i was in a in a church away from home um, for a week of meetings through the course of the week i found out there was very sensitive issues happening and the the, uh, the um, people in <clears throat> that that were part of that had experienced a great revival and so some of these that were revived now had become a great stumbling block uh, in the community. The good Lord gave me the chance that I could speak to the ones that were revived. <clears throat> As I sat down with them, I very quickly found out that the experience they had made 
I shared it with all of my heart. I was so happy that they had made that. They had come to liberty. I honestly believe they had come to a good level of liberty, but they did not understand this point. They were now using their own liberty as a stumbling block to the people around them. Does my freedom edify? Is my liberty, my freedom that you and I have, is it driven with charity? And that was the, 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 the problem in this church or these individuals. They now were so revived, but you know, charity was missing. The only thing that the people around them felt was condemnation. And if only I will become like you, that's the only chance that I can become a good person. It wasn't charity driven. I think the good Lord did a work later in, in, in those lives. Or do you just know that you're free? That's a big difference. If I know that I'm free or if I've sensed it in myself that my freedom is driving charity. It, it makes me love my brother. It makes me willing to kneel down before my brother and allow him to speak to me. I have a desire that he will be edified. That's what we had in 1 Corinthians 8. Let's go to point number two. Paul says, I have made myself a servant unto all. I, I love that. That's a freedom that each group will just benefit of. All that we as a church would be a full, full of these people that have become free and now have made ourselves a servant unto all. You know what? I'll make myself vulnerable. And I invite every one of us. In your opinion, and please hold your mouth till I'm done preaching, but you sure can talk about this. In your opinion, is Ronald Cornelson a man of servanthood or is he a man of pushing? If I am a servant, you will sense that. If I am a man that pushes you, you will sense that very clearly too. I don't intend to put the focus to me. But if we turn it around, are you an individual of service? Or do people around you feel, oh, I'm being pushed. In order for me to be accepted, I have to be so and so. I have made myself a servant unto all. And I like that. We will get to that. Unto all. Some of us have already become a servant, perhaps, in our own family. Some of us might have become a servant to a few of our neighbors or a few of our church members. Some of us might be able to serve everyone. And then some of us are even able to reach into other cultures and, and, uh, and serve them there. But as a servant, I will promote your welfare. It's like a slave does. A slave, he works without being asked. He works without being hired. He is subject to his master's will. Paul voluntarily puts himself into this condition. I'm your servant. He labors for their good. At the end of the day, that's the only measuring tool he has. And that is that you have benefited. That is that you have been made well. He was very careful to please as a servant does to his master. <clears throat> he acted in many cases as if he had no privileges. Made himself a servant that they might made, be made free. And it's interesting how he did that. Now when we go back to 1 Corinthians 9 and then in verse 20 and on he explains what he's doing. Unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. Paul in his heart was not a Jew. He was born a Jew, he was raised as a Jew, but he was converted away from the Jews to Christianity. To them that are under the law, as under the law. That I may gain them that are under the law. Paul had moved away from both of these. Some of us come from who knows what kind of a background, but we come from a very different background. We heard in the testimony today, a different background. We have turned away. From, some of us were converted away from a background. Like Paul, how can we relate back to that? 
could you become like that in order to gain? Verse 21, he goes to the extent, he says, to them that are without law. This is clearly referring to non-Christian society as without law. And then he has a few words in bracket, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. All with the intent of serving, that I might gain <clears throat> them to the, to the gospel. Verse 22, he became to the weak as a weak. And finally, he says, I am made all things to all men. If we would take just that, we would say, well, then you're nothing. Then you're just a double mouth person. You will just speak to everyone. But look at what he says, what he concludes it with, that I might by all means save some. It wasn't that Paul just lost the foundation of everything. He put aside every weight. He put aside everything that was in the way because he had the freedom. He didn't need to stand and demand cultural difference. He didn't need, need to command um, traditional differences. He was gospel focused and he was there to gain them for the gospel. And to this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. <clears throat> so far. The last point, the point of being made to, in freedom, back to verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. That I might gain. I said there before that we need to be a selfless people, focused outside of ourselves, focused outside of our own box. A heart warm zeal for God. Breathing after salvation for other men. We don't insist upon our rights. We don't insist upon our own privileges. But we're in this to please God. <clears throat> he goes on. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the price? So here is a running. Uh, you and I, we're all in this running. We're here to gain someone. Verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate. He is careful in his own ways. He's willing to change so that I can make it. He's willing to change. This starts at home. Can you and I work with our own circle? If we can, we will be successful with other circles. If we can't, we won't be successful other ways. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beareth the, beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Can you and I do this? Is the gospel, is the well-being of our brother, is the well-being of the lost soul important enough to us that I'm willing to be, to bring my body, my own ideas into the subjection? I give it up. I'm willing to change. Some of these things are simply the ways how you and I might dress. I'll be honest with you. When I'm being asked to come and preach in certain places, I watch very closely what I dress. Because in, there's places where this shirt would be an offense, where I can go and preach. I consider it a great privilege, but it stays at home so that I can reach the people a little bit better. There's... And it makes a difference. There's things in this church today that you and I should look at. Am I being an obstacle? It is part of this being open. It's part of that of being approachable. Can people come and approach you? Can your brother come and approach you? What does us really, really well though too is that we are willing to discuss some of these Cultural things with different cultures. And listen them out. It helps us to see things wider. It helps us to get rooted better. It helps us to get focused. Clear. What is the pursuit? We can all of a sudden become very um, 
culturally focused and we could lose the impact and the gospel. But if I am an obstacle to my brother, I will not have an impact in the gospel. So the message today, it's a difficult one, I realize that. But are you a free person? Can you move, can you preach, can you teach the gospel in your life? Have you been able to overcome that which was precious to you? To the point where the gospel power can now flow through your life. Point number two. Have you, after the, you receive this freedom, have you been able to give yourself as a servant? I appreciated the, the uh, I think it's the German language that had this, this verse that Paul uh, uh, warned them not to become servants again back to the law. And yet here he says that he's a servant. And I was thinking, okay, what's the difference? I have made myself a servant unto all. It is very, very important that you know that you are a free man. And if you know that, now you can become a servant. As a servant, is your and my breath today to gain for the gospel? To attract people to the gospel? Is it your heart to attract your brother, your sister to the gospel? Is it your heart to attract the one that is way different in culture? To attract him to the gospel? Let's check our hearts. Are we these servants? Or are we still in the box looking at our own thing? Let's stand. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you very much. Thank you so much for your word, even though it sometimes seems to challenge and stretch us beyond what we can accept. God, as we have looked into this topic, honestly, a very challenging subject, I pray, Father, that we would be people that would be free in Christ Jesus, approachable, pliable, Willing and happy to listen when somebody sees an issue in my life. Willing to change. Willing to accept where I should. Oh God, I pray this morning for those of us that are perhaps a quiet people. And yet very, very stiff in our ways of doing things. That we would become free. I pray for us that might be dealing with pride. And wouldn't want to become like the brother. Wouldn't want to listen to the sister. <clears throat> that we would humble ourselves. And become a free people. Lord I pray that every one of us. Would live a life of freedom. Where we can be an impact to the gospel. Oh God. Where people as they will deal with us. Will not sense that there is a reaction. Or that there is a resistance. Or there is a protection. But there's honestly the breath of the gospel in us. Speaking freedom. So that we could gain more to the gospel. Whether they are Jews or unlawful. Whoever they are. God that we would be those that have a living breath within us. And people would be drawn to the gospel. I pray your blessing over us. I pray that you would continue to mold and make us. After your will. In Jesus name. Amen.